So good evening, everybody, and welcome. Welcome, welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is September the 3rd, 2020. We are into the last quarter of uh, 2020. It's been an exciting year. Um, and I was uh, actually thinking about what um, I should be doing in the, the, the month of September, because uh, last, because the, uh, the last couple of months, each month I have, um, you know, um, picked a theme and then expand on the theme for each of the month, uh, each weeks during that month. And so I was thinking September, what is the best way? How can I serve all of you better? And, you know, when I was doing meditation on it, what came up was uh, really working on beliefs. And so that's why the, the theme for September, all of September would be re-engineering beliefs. And I would um, kind of get more into how come, uh, I think this is an, an appropriate topic to talk about in, especially in September, because September has some um, strong things going on. I'm not seeing that, you know, August or July had been, you know, weak and, 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 and mild or nothing like that. It's actually all year. It has been really interesting. Let's put it that way. So, um, so I'm going to start to talk about, you know, how come, uh, so, so beliefs, why, why are beliefs so, so important? So I remember about uh, at least over, over 20 years ago now, I believe, I met a very gifted psychic. I would not name names. I would just call her X, let's say, Madame X or, or, or so. So he, she is definitely a female. So I'll call her X. So she was uh, a gifted psychic. And I remember the first time I went to, to get a reading from her, I was uh, really... Um, well, I don't. I didn't know what to expect, so so I was open for everything, and I'm just you know thinking of in getting a reading just for um, purely entertainment, and I find that you know she was very good at really uh, telling me things about what happened in the past, and and also um, quite a number of things that she told me about um, the future actually came true as time went on. So I was very you know, impressed by her. So that's why after that experience, um, so after that, almost every year, at least once, sometimes more than once, I would go and, you know, get a reading from her. And I would be really interested to interested to find out what happen, what's going to happen in the new year. Usually, I would you know, make an appointment with her maybe January or at latest by February, and get a reading from her, and then just you know anxiously see how um, what she told me is going to unfold for the rest of the year. And and um, so it was actually quite the um, adventure for me. And so I, I've known that um, Madame X for quite a, a number of years. And as I got to know more about her and we became friends and also I myself has uh, uh, started growing um, as, as I look more into um, growing my own consciousness and doing things like, um, like meditation, doing hypnosis on myself and for other people, all of that. So as I grow, I, and I also got to know her better. Um, and so I actually find that at some point, though, her reading stopped working for me uh, in, in the sense that it's not as um, easy or that I would say the a lot of what she was telling me just, you know, somehow didn't pan out as as much as before, and finally, I just stopped getting uh, readings from her altogether. And then, um, and then after, uh, I wouldn't say after a while, but I also have like she's not the only friend I have who are psychically gifted. 
I do have other friends. And so sometimes I would, you know, get a reading from one and then also get a reading from, you know, multiple people. And then there is also another girlfriend of mine who um, uh, has been like, she's also a, a um, professional uh, healer, psychic herself. So she does um, angel reading cards and all of that. And, you know, when we get together, she would give me very spontaneous reading, not a, not a very, uh, I would say formal reading that I get from, you know, um, Madame X. So, and um, so I would get some spontaneous reading. However, from my girlfriend though, I find that a lot of like most of the time though, it, it somehow did not pan out. It, um, whatever it is that she said did not really um, work. So then the, the thing is, I was actually a bit puzzled for a while is why, how come some psychics are able to look into the future with amazing accuracy while others, um, just cannot seem to be able to do it. Now, I just want to mention that my girlfriend, who who was also a professional um, card reader, she has other clients, and then also, but from 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 the um, the feedback of other clients, though, they seem to work for her. But somehow, it's just it's just when she's reading for me that it. Uh, <laughs> somehow didn't work out for me. So that's why I was puzzled. So thinking about this, it actually led me to really become more um, sensitive and, and know that apart from the obvious, maybe some psychics are more uh, talented than others. However, um, there's also the, the um, common element is that the person that is receiving the reading is me. So the, it seems like how I feel about the person that is giving me the reading or how, how they give me the reading also um, affected how, I would say, how effective or not the reading is for me. And, um, and so, the, the underlying is, and also I just want to point out that the underlying assumption of, you know, going to a psychic or wanting to know, look a little bit about the future is that we, we assume that the future is like a road that we can actually look at where the road is going. And, and the, the only difference is that normal people, normal meaning um, people that are not um, sensitive or intuitive, cannot see things that are beyond the, 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 this moment, whereas more sensitive or, and special people would be able to see a few steps, maybe even you know, a good stretch of road ahead. So that is kind of the underlying assumption. And which brings me back to the, the subject of this evening is about belief. The, the truth of the matter, as I understand it now, is that there actually is no such thing as a future that is already there, like a road that we can just look at and be able to read and tell that the, the future is actually not known, or I should say not set in stone. The future is, is kind of like a, um, it's created. We, um, so we create it ourselves and also we also co-create our future with the, the people around us. And the more, I would say, the more um, globally concerned the, 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 the event or the question may be, then the, there would be more people that potentially has input into creating that future. So that's why it's actually quite important to learn more about our beliefs, because actually what we believe in uh, has a potential of creating the future. And if we can control our beliefs, then we can actually control our future to, I would say, a lot of extents, because if we can somehow take control of what we believe in, we can 
and, and what we believe in also influence what kind of action, how do we respond to what life has for us. So if we, um, let's say if we have the belief that, you know, a certain course of action will have a result, a certain result, and we don't like that result, then that will actually prevent us from taking the action. Whereas the, um, the, the, the belief that, you know, um, that the, so that means that our beliefs actually um, dictate our actions as well to a, a big extent. So, so in a very, I would say, um, very correlated way, what we believe actually it's, I'm, I'm not really overstepping in saying that if we can control our beliefs, if we can really concentrate and pick our beliefs um, very carefully and really focus on the beliefs that we have, that we can control our actions and also control our future as well. So that's why um, the, the study or the more understanding of beliefs is in order because um, we are transitioning out of the, the, the third dimension into fifth dimension. So there are some beliefs in that's really um, supported and true and working really well in, in uh, third dimension. However, they may not be the same in the fifth dimension. So that's really why I want to talk about re-engineering our beliefs. Um, so what is the, so the point of all this is really to, to say that when we um, find out a way to align our beliefs, to truly align all our intentions, our beliefs, and our actions, we would be able to create uh, or manifest whatever it is that we want in our lives. And of course, there is a catch. The, the catch is that, you know, some of our beliefs are um, very conscious and obvious. However, some of our beliefs are rather unconscious. So, um, and so when we try to align our beliefs and our, our actions and, um, and intentions, then there's some part of it that we somehow cannot get at because the unconscious beliefs that we may not even know about, we, may not, we have not had a chance to really uh, look at, is there lurking in the background and maybe derailing us so that we, we, it's kind of like we are driving our car, but sometimes we, the wheel is not responding to us. So that's what the unconscious beliefs are like. However, I want to actually um, give a, I would say an, an easier suggestion is that if you, if you um, focus on your intention and you're taking um, actions and you align as much of the beliefs that you're conscious of and you get the results that you want, then you're pretty good. You, there may be some unconscious um, beliefs that, you, that is still there, but it's somehow it's not, um, it's not important enough or um, it's, it's not enough to derail you from getting your results. However, if you manage to align your intentions, your, uh, as much of your conscious beliefs as you can, and you take action, and you're not getting the results that you want to, then, uh, then the good assumption is that there are some beliefs, underneath, underlying beliefs that you still have not um, gotten to yet, still have not tried to um, uh, transform enough yet. And so the usually the culprit is those unaligned beliefs, those crossed, um, 
cross-wired beliefs is what's derailing you from getting the results that you want. Um, let's see, where am I at? So I actually want to um, think to, to, to put it one further is that, is that the way we create or the way we manifest is that we don't, um, it's manifesting something is not, um, it's, it's not a straight line. So in order to know where, what it is, how it is that you would be able to create what you want, you need to know where you are and you also need to know where you want to go. However, in the process of going though, because there are, because we are, um, we are human. So sometimes we, there would be um, beliefs that are so unconscious that we are not even aware of. So we invariably, the, the process of failing and then um, getting closer to where it is that we, we want to go and being able to create is part of the process. So it means that we have to have a, an understanding that failure is never about, um, oh, okay, you're not good enough or anything like that. Failure simply means that there's something that is really, um, I would say the, the, the feedback that there's something in your, in your creation process that's not working. So, um, and you need to go back and uh, review it and then and, and find out where it is that there's that blockage and transform that blockage. So creation, or I should say manifestation, like creation is if something has never been done, then it's a creation. Manifestation is more like if you are trying to make something that has already been done, but you haven't done it yourself, but maybe, um, but someone else has already followed a, a certain process. So you're just um, adopting that. So that's the difference between creation and manifestation. So then creation or manifestation is not a straight line. It's not about okay, I'm here and I want to go there and I just want to go there. And if I don't get there, then um, it's, I'm not enough or something is wrong or, or, or that I will never get there because I didn't, I didn't create it or I couldn't manifest it. So there must be something wrong. It's, it's about a um, creation and even manifestation is really a spiral process where you are where you are at right now and in the process of creating something you you shoot for the direction that you want to go and then sometimes maybe because of unconscious beliefs that is um, it's really preventing you from getting there but as long as you don't give up, you would come around and, and rethink the whole process and tweak your, um, your strategy or your plan or your mindset a little bit and repeat that process. So it is really a spiral process where you keep going at it. You keep going at it. And every time you are slightly further along, from where you were to where you needed to go. So it's the circular process so that at some point you will get, you will get to create what it is that you want to create and you'll get to manifest what it is that you, you want to manifest. So that really is how creation is. And, um, so there are a couple of things which I, I just want to touch, but I'm not going to really talk too much about. 
um, the first thing is really how do we find out about the, the, the unconscious beliefs? Um, so there's a, there are some ways that you can actually find out of those. So that would be a, um, something that I would talk about in, in another week. But right now, I actually want to keep pushing on. And then the second thing is, of course, how do we transform beliefs? That would be, of course, another uh, week we'll, we'll focus on doing that. And for this week, I actually just want to backtrack a little bit and start to look at a little, some of the, excuse me, um, I need to blow my nose a little bit. And uh, hang on, I just want to stop. Okay, so let's uh, continue on. Um, so what I want to talk about is really um, how the, some of the, the major differences. Uh, in, so talking about unconscious beliefs, some of the major unconscious beliefs um, between 3D beliefs and 5D beliefs, because um, since we, we are really in the hot in the midst of transitioning from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. So I just want to bring up a few of the very fundamental and maybe unconscious beliefs that, <clears throat> that we hold um, for, that is true. And it's normal to have in 3D, uh, which um, when we get to fifth dimension, they, they kind of become um, irrelevant. So the first of it is this, the first one, is that um, reality is objective or uh, yeah so we we think that okay there is so 3d one of the three third dimension belief is that reality is objective um so what do i mean by that is is that there is a reality that anyone who looks at the reality would um, get the same, see the same thing and get the same results. So that's what reality is objective, really. That's what I'm referring to. However, um, that is actually not, not true anymore because even, even in quantum physics, that has already been, um, that has already been disproved is that reality is, subjective that we actually each um i would say to to ex to really extend it fully is that we uh, reality is very subjective that what reality is depends on who is looking at reality at the reality and um so knowing that reality is not objective that reality is actually very malleable you can meaning that you can shape it that the reality is not something that is solid and anyone that looks at it will will see the same thing or have the same um, uh, experience that's not true it's actually um, and that we have a say in what is real that we can actually influence if not completely uh, change reality at some point we would be able to do that um, in in five in fifth dimension however in this transition it's it's enough to know that the one thing is to know that reality is subjective and it is malleable it's it depends on reality depends on who is observing it and who is trying to experience it because we actually create or construct our own reality and so even so that's why um reality everyone has a slightly different version uh, of reality and the, the the difference could be very subtle, or it could be rather profound. 
it depends on your level of consciousness. Something that is real and true in a certain level of consciousness may become uh, totally not true anymore at a different level of consciousness. So that is the first uh, unconscious belief that that marks the difference between uh, third dimension conscious, uh, third dimension beliefs and fifth dimension beliefs. <laughs> Excuse me. And then the, the, the second one, I would say, actually the second one actually has a, a few corollaries. Uh, I mean, meaning that they are, they are similar um, beliefs but I would kind of name them uh, name them a little differently. So the first one I want to mention is that the the belief that um, I am separate. So we in three uh, D thinking is about separation. So we believe that because we I have this body and I am this body. So that's the, the corollary. I, I have this body, I am this body, and this body seemingly is separate from um, someone else's body and separate from my environment. Therefore, I am separate. And so what really is the, the fifth dimension um, belief is this, is that consciousness is everything and everywhere actually. So that means that um, I cannot be separate from, uh, from other people, from everyone else, from my surrounding as well. Because if consciousness is everything and everywhere, then, oops, uh, then even though I have this body, it also means that I am not this body. This body that the, the I in the sense, which is consciousness, my consciousness is actually beyond my body as well. It's not just my body, it is beyond my body. So that's the, the like a major difference between third dimension beliefs and fifth dimension beliefs is this idea of separation and that I am my body. Um, the, the fifth dimension belief, actually the underlying belief is that there is oneness and that um, even though I have a body, but I am not my body, that the I is the consciousness rather than the the body the consciousness so consciousness is everywhere and everything so that is a big jump and i would just actually like to stop there that um i think i have kind of um really shown that there is a, a lot of difference there's a big jump between third dimensional beliefs and thinking versus fifth dimensional beliefs and thinking. And so this is the, the progression that we are going towards. And it does not mean that we have to do it by 2021. We are actually um, gradually, um, well, not too gradual, but, but we are moving in that direction and that we are growing our consciousness to the point where um, when you get into fifth dimension, you would have more and more experience of yourself as consciousness, as uh, everything and everyone and, and experience this oneness. It will be easier and easier for you to actually, um, when you start to assume that you are not separate and that you are not just your body, then you are actually facilitating that process of incorporating and trying to transition from third dimension beliefs system into fifth dimension.
belief system. So that's all I want to talk about beliefs for now. So let's um, 